Howdy y'all, Monty, AKA Mustang Freak here. Well, there's a big Fusion update and I wanted to do a quick video on how to get your Fusion firmware updated and then get your Wi-Fi firmware updated on your devices so you can take advantage of some of the hard work that everybody's put in on this. Uh, it's been TBS, George, a lot of individuals testing this uh, stuff just to make sure it's ready for today. So I will turn around and get us on the bench. Okay, now that we're on the bench, let's go ahead and do a quick refresher course on how to get your Fusion firmware updated to the latest that you will need to get everything working and see some of the goodies that George has put in here for us. Pretty simple, uh, pull your cover off, be very careful that you don't force anything, and then hold the fusion module as you plug it in. Don't let it wiggle around on the pins because you might bend something. Pull up your TBS agent, make sure it's on the latest version of that. Then just go ahead and click on the fusion tab, firmware tab. And then you should see at the top for Fusion RX 2.15. If you do not see Fusion 2.15, please go up to these three dots up in the top right and make sure that you have include beta firmware on your profile. If you do not, then you will not see that and then you will be asking why. It is very safe to use the TBS beta firmware. By the time it sees this beta state, a bunch of us have already taken it from the guys that have created it and seen what we can do to break it. So I am one of those and guilty of breaking it multiple times before seeing this state. Back where we were. Okay, mine says refresh, but if yours doesn't, just says upgrade. Go ahead and click that button. Make sure you can see update in the button right here. And then simple as that, let her rip. And just be patient. It takes some time to get these things updated. Okay, you can see we're almost done here, but don't pull anything until you see your fusion module restart and allow this the moment to verify that it sees everything complete. Okay, we got all completes across the board. Fusion module has been restarted, so we're safe to go ahead and pull the cord from it. I am going to reinstall my cover. Put some antennas on it because after I get this updated, I want to show you a few of the features and then discuss dynamic VTX power. So power up your fusion module. Make sure in its settings, you go to CRSF, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi client, and make sure that is enabled. Okay, so I'll exit out of here. Now I will go to my Wi-Fi 
on my laptop and you'll see here that it says TBS Fusion. I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. I'm going to allow my computer the moment to connect to it and depending on your settings and which version of Windows it will or will not give you an error saying that there's no internet. You can completely ignore that. Just let it figure that out before you go opening your browser. So open your browser. And then you'll be going to 192.168.4.1 in your search bar. When you do that, that's accessing the TBS Fusion or well, TBS Wi Fi page. Now we're going to go and you're going to take the link that I have either down in the description here or you're going to go to the TBS Lounge and in the announcements you can pull from there. There's a zip file that has all the new firmware for all the devices in there. So you will want to go and download that. Once you download that, it'll be a zip file. So you will want to take that zip file and use your extract tool and extract it. I'm lazy. I just let it extract right to my uh, downloads folder. So I already have it there. So I'll just just like you, I'll go ahead and replace them. Now we can close these windows. We won't need them again. Now we're back to this web page that I had you open. There's a upgrade tab. Go ahead and hit that. Choose file. Now you're going to go to your downloads folder. Go to that recently unzipped folder, TBS Cloud Activation. Open up it. Now you'll see version 1.41 1 alpha. That is where the sweetness is. This Wi-Fi has been worked on by many people and is really the foundation layer for a whole bunch of new features that are on the way and being unlocked with this. So go ahead and open that and you'll see all your devices. So right now we're playing with our Fusion. We're gonna go ahead and open up Fusion. We'll go ahead and click Firmware, and then Open. Now, hit Upgrade. This is where I want you to be extremely patient. This is gonna go and it'll say Reboot Success. We are not done. Just let it finish for about another 30, 40, sometimes I just, to be OCD, let it set for a couple minutes. But you want to wait until you can actually go back in and click back on 192.168.4.1. Well, after you reconnect to the Wi-Fi, so we see the Fusion Wi-Fi has come back up on our Wi-Fi list. We connect to it. Once we've connected to that, we should be able to reload this web page and we're back in. All right, so before we move on, I want you to click on Wi-Fi and then go all the way to the bottom and cl click Clear History. This will help us in an additional step later. If you've got, you've played with the Wi-Fi before, you've connected to things, those old logins can corrupt what we're doing now. So we wanna start with a completely fresh history on everything. So, Clear History, get that out. Now we're going to go back and I'm going to do this exact same thing to my Tango 2, to my Tracer, to my 
full size crossfire. It's all the same procedure. You open up your internet connection, make sure the device you're looking at, its Wi-Fi has been enabled, connect to that internet connection with your software, whichever it's the Apple or Chrome or whatever your choice is, and then you will update it in this same fashion. You will hit upgrade, you will pull that 1.41 Wi-Fi firmware, open the device you're looking at, and then upgrade it from there. So now I'm going to go ahead, like I said, I'm going to do the related devices, and then we will go and move on to showing some of the features and how to get those working and what they look like. Okay, once you get your firmware updated, the Wi-Fi and regular firmware portions, you should be ready to connect these together with no hotspot or anything else involved. So I'm going to power up my vehicle of choice. And then I've got my Fusion, well my HDO's DVRing, so hopefully I can inlay this for you also. So you want to get into your settings go down to settings CRSF Fusion Wi-Fi Wi-Fi client and then you should be able to go down to scan scan done go up to SS oops go with SSID and you should be able to find your Tango in that list so leave that as the selection Hit connect. Yes, you want to connect. Now just leave it alone. Now, you can do this through the web page, but hopefully this will work for you with no problem. Sometimes you have to scroll through a few connections um, and maybe even attempt it a couple times, but Oops. let's not do that again. So now you can see I have all my devices listed here. You can see the my Tango, you can see my Diversity RX, you can see my Evo. Everything that's connected via CRSF will show up on all your devices. So here's the, on the Fusion, you can see this. As I bump the camera, I'm going to go ahead and go into Agent Light here. You can also see on my Tango all the devices that are available. And neat thing here, you go into your Fusion module, and lo and behold, all your Fusion, well, some abbreviated Fusion settings. Go back into Agent Light, Evo. You see all the options there. I can change my Evo channel from here. All right, so there's a couple of the things there. I'll go back into the Fusion. Now, this is VTX Sync. What you can do here is you can do what's lead, lead auto, or follow. So lead gives you the option to go into your matrix. And then if you wanna change a channel, what you do is you go over to your channel that you wanna be on. Oops. And then you just send that to your VTX. And what'll happen, it'll switch for you. Okay, next I wanna show you is lead auto. So with lead auto, what you can do is simply switch to the channel you want the fusion, your VTX to be on, and it'll automatically push that to your VTX. So you can see the bars here. 
I'll just switch and you can see it's automatically picking up that channel. So as, as fast as you change the channels, it'll drop it right onto that channel for you. Now follow does the opposite. You can change the VTX channel and the Fusion will go and follow that channel. Pretty simple stuff, but I would like you to experiment with it and get comfortable with it before you really take it out to the field. Okay, next I would like to discuss dynamic VTX power. I saved this to the end because unfortunately it only applies for non-flight controller configurations. If you're using a quad with Betaflight, there are some hardware configuration problems that are preventing dynamic VTX power from working. But if you're using something like this wing here, where you have the VTX connected directly to your RX via CRSF, you can enable dynamic VTX power and then it will automatically adjust the VTX power per distance and the noise floor. So I will cut to a little bit of a DVR from an earlier version of this firmware from when I was testing it so you can kind of get a view of what, how it works. And if you have any questions with that, please, by all means, send me a message or any of the TBS crew. Hopefully this helps you guys out and I appreciate you for watching.